Take me to a moment that optimism wasn't there, that mentality wasn't there. And you're like, is this really what I want to do? Hi, my friend. How are you? I'm so great. How are you? You look stunning. Ditto, darling, ditto. <laughs> the skin. <laughs> Thank um, you. You are an extraordinary actress. You, your resume is filled with a plethora of from Dear White People to Hello Cupid to all the things. Yeah. How did you know that acting was something you wanted to pursue? You know, I've been an actor, a performer, really my whole life since I was small since I could walk and talk. This is what I've always wanted to do. Um, but I, I remember my first play. I was in Montessori school. I was in, you know, very, very small. I was in preschool. And it was the three Billy Goats Gruff. And I think it was probably four. And I was cast as one of the Billy Goats. And I went home and told my parents I didn't want to be a Billy Goat because the Billy Goats were mean. And I wanted to be like, a nice character in the play. And of course, my dad was like, but the Billy Goats have all the lines. Like, you don't want all the lines? Like, you, you know, and I was like, no, yeah. I just, I wanted to be a bunny rabbit because the bunnies were nice in the play. And so I, you know, didn't have any lines. I was four, you know, just for context. But to me, that story just speaks to, I've always loved to perform, but it's also had to always feel good to me. Mm -hmm. It, I could never do it even from a very young age, and it feel inauthentic. So, yeah, but it just, I don't know, I think it's just, I always knew it's what I was supposed to do. Yeah, and that's hard because a lot of times, well, in the industry that you're in, and especially being an actress, I mean, coming out the gate, you are already getting all the no's before you get the yeses. Yeah. And so granted, <laughs> you started at four and you knew that you had this desire, you knew that this is something you want to pursue. How do you keep your belief alive with so much unbelief combating you daily, which would be the nose? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I mean, the way that I combat it is by being very clear about what I was sent here to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I never expected this to be easy. But I also know that most things that are worth having take, you know, take some hard work. Um, and that the story is in the struggle. The blessings are in the struggle. So I think knowing that I was sent here to um, provide hope and inspiration and joy and just entertainment, you know, just on a very, you know, basic level, just entertainment to people, um, that b because I, I've had such a knowing of this since a very young age, it, al it allows at times for the, for the nose to roll off my back a little bit easier. Because you knew that this is what you were called to do. Yes, and now- So I, there was certainty there. Oh yeah, but, but in the midst of it, it's also extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And there's times that I wish it were easier. Um, there's times that I wish um, I didn't have to fight as hard as I do, but I just always remember who I'm fighting for, that my fight, my journey will be a blessing to somebody else, that whatever doors I'm able to, to, to burst through, that that means that somebody else can easily glide through after me. Come on. You know, it makes it, it makes it worth it. So, but yes, knowing all this, and I think what you just said is, is exactly right, and it's, it's filled with so much wisdom. So kudos to you for even understanding the mentality and the optimism that you have to have. Mm -hmm. But take me to a moment where that optimism wasn't there, that mentality wasn't there. Yeah. And you're like, is this really what I want to do? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's happened many times <laughs> over the course of my career and in, in my life. I remember um, I was probably a junior at Howard. 
I, I went to Howard University and I was studying musical theater there. And while I was at Howard, I, I always felt kind of like a bit of an underdog in the, in the theater department. I kind of, at times I felt unseen, to be completely honest. I felt uh, like my talent or, or who, the, the breadth of my individuality wasn't, Understood for mm-hmm. for I don't really know how else to describe it. Yeah, and so I completely get it. Sure. I, I remember auditioning for a play that I really wanted um, to be a part of. I think I wanted the lead role, and I didn't get it. And I, I remember stepping outside the fine arts department and calling my mom. And so this is two thousand. Eight, I'm going to say. And I remember calling my mom and just saying, like, Mom, why is this so hard? Like, because the thing about me is that I've always given everything my all. I don't half-ass anything. I don't try to cut any corners. I don't want any handouts. Um, and so it just, it, I was so defeated. Yeah. And I already knew at this point that I wanted to pursue a film and television career in Los Angeles. But at the time, I was like, well, Mom, I, I feel like I'm not even making headway at school. Like, and I just remember her telling me, Ashley, you have to hold on. Like, Oof. you know who you are. You know the talent that you possess. Who cares if the department doesn't get it? You're in college. Like, you're there to learn. You're there to have fun. You're there to have experiences. It's you not getting a part, and I can't even tell you the name of, of the musical right now. That's how insignificant it is now in my life. I knew what I was worthy of, but I felt like, who cares if I'm the only one that knows it? If nobody else gets it, that's deep. then how am I going to get what, what I know I've earned and what I've deserved? It felt so alienating, for a lack of a better term. Isolating. You, feel, you yeah. feel isolated, yeah. Hopefully, perfectly we're at the end of this pandemic. What was that season like for you? Oh, man. Nah. <laughs> Taking me back. OK. <laughs> Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> it was actually beautiful. Hmm. My, oh my gosh, were we even engaged? No, we weren't, we weren't engaged. Um, my boyfriend at the time and I, it was just so nice because we got to spend so much time with one another. Mm-hmm. We got to enjoy each other in a way that I think only the pandemic can have you do. And it was nice to kind of have days. You know, at first it was like stressful, okay? Yeah. It's like what's happening is the world ending, right? <laughs> Get me out of here. Yeah, but once we kind of got through that, it was nice to kind of have these days where we didn't know what time it was and we weren't looking at the clock and nobody had to go anywhere and nobody had to do anything and we could watch whatever we wanted to watch and we would dance randomly around the house and cook. And Mm -hmm. it just was, you know, we were in this tiny one-bedroom apartment at the time in Beverly Hills, but it almost, now that I'm talking about it now, it almost felt like we were on a, you know, English countryside or something, just unplugged. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Uh, But I also think that the pandemic forced me to grow. It forced me to mature. It forced me to live. I think that's what the pandemic taught me is like, at, at any moment, life can be halted in a way that shakes up your whole world. Mm. But you have to keep living. Yeah. You might be living in a different way. You might be enjoying things in a, in a different way, but you still have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, out of the pandemic too, I kind of got innovative. I started like a a IGTV series called Quarantine Convos where I was just talking to some friends about how we how we were feeling about being in the pandemic. And that was really fun connecting with people in that way. Um, I feel like the pandemic forced people to be maybe even more vulnerable than than they might have been accustomed to because... Mm -hmm. What else was there to do? Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, but when I look back, the, the pandemic was actually, the word that's coming to mind is, is important. Mm. It was, it's an important, significant time in my life. 
so much changed. So because it was an important, significant time in your life, realistically, would you do it all over again? 1,000%. Mm. 1,000, uh, my husband, he's my husband now. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about, so yeah, a lot changed. <laughs> um, we talk about that. If we could go back, obviously. Meaning you wouldn't be going to sit, you yeah. wouldn't be working. You basically would be back in your four walls. Do you feel like you're at a place now? Was the growth that you're talking about be, you're able to be still more? perhaps, as opposed to wanting to go, 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 go. Because if you're able to go back into that season, because a lot of people, that was tough. That, that, was, that was arduous and strenuous, not in the simple fact that we just had to sit at home, but all the uncertainties. So how did you get there? Okay. How are you able to say yes so quick? I love that you're asking this because it's something that I'm dealing with right now. Okay, so... The reason I would go, I would, I said yes emphatically and very fast is because the rest, the break felt so good. It was just amazing. And it was so nice to be able to interact and enjoy my husband, my then boyfriend and then fiance in a way that was private and just ours. Mm. So we have all these great memories from that time and, and I got to really just sit and be creative without anybody having any expectations of me. Mm -hmm. But it's, so it's interesting you're saying like, how, how, how am I able to say that so easily going back? It's because, so now I, today, I'm in a space where I kind of um, am experiencing another break. You know, I'm off Dear White People. I'm in between kind of looking for that next project, You're that next transition. gig. I'm in transition. And it's been really difficult for me. I was really just about difficult. To say, transition? Oh, Ooh, I've been boy. struggling. Oh my gosh, I've been struggling. And so it's interesting you ask me that because I've been starting to compare it to, well, why was I so okay in the pandemic? Why was I okay? I wasn't freaked out about work. I wasn't even really freaked out about money. I was really just, and I think it's because I didn't have another choice. Mm. It was world, it was a mandate worldwide. Mm -hmm. It was like, what I was doing is what everybody was doing. But with this, it feels like it's, it's, it's got to kind of back to that keep, Howard I gotta thought. I got to keep up with the Joneses. It, it's, it's I got to do me. this, yeah. Oh yeah, why, why aren't I working? Why aren't, you know, emailing my agents and managers and trying to figure out what do I, what do I need to do? And the truth is, nothing. I don't need to do anything. I need, and, and also, if God wants me to take a break, thank you. Because if I'm taking a break now, that means he needs me to rest. He needs me to recharge because there's something ahead that's going to require my energy, my time. So if right now I'm not working as much, it's fine. You know why? Because I get to have dinner with my husband every night and I get to travel and see friends spur of the moment. Things that I cannot do when I'm on set for 14 hours a day. Boom. So if I'm sitting down, if I'm resting, cool. But it again, I'm saying it very easily now. It's a wrestle. It's it's, it's 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 a wrestle. I actually just said this in the last conversation, but it's very parallel to this. Is I was listening to a talk yesterday, and he was saying that the wrestle is not to do. The wrestle and the fight and the struggle is to wrestle into the rest. Ooh. That's what's hard for us. And I'm speaking to myself. Like I'm not, I'm yeah. just, I'm literally relaying what I heard, but it it pierced me and it convicted me. I almost felt this correction of hey, there is a there is a purpose in the rest. There is a purpose in the stop. There's a purpose. And so even for mm. you, as you're yeah. saying that, that's how I was like, wait, I need to understand why it's such a hard yes, because we struggle with the being as opposed to the doing. And in all reality, we just need to be, but because we feel like we need to do, we feel like that's the success. That's the accolades as we're doing. Yeah. But in all reality, the success is just being. Oh my goodness. And being okay with it. Like yeah. truly being like, you know, when people ask, what are you up to? I'm actually just relaxing. I'm yeah. actually just kind of on a bit of a break and being like yeah. proud of that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. What is one challenge that you can kind of pinpoint or take me to that has forced you immediately to look inward? 
you know, for me, it's marriage. And it's because marriage is the biggest blessing of my life. I feel so grateful to be able to experience this type of love, support, partnership in my lifetime. But the true work of marriage I'm finding, because I love him so much, I want to be my best self for him, for us, for our future children, for the legacy that we're trying to create. There's no half-stepping because so much is on the line. And I don't mean that in a way that I feel pressure. It's not that. It's, it's, um, it's a responsibility that is really important and really vast. Um, and so I just say that to say I, it causes me when, when things come up, rather than wanting to go straight to, to something he needs to fix with himself, I have to say... But Ashley, you got to go inward. What, what, did, what could you have done differently in this situation? How could you have made a different choice? Like, it can't always be. Marriage teaches you it cannot always be the other person. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Marriage is a partnership. If two become one, then what are we working on? It's not just you, you, you. It's not just me, me, me. It's us. And that is a task you have to willingly choose to take on for a lifetime. It's humbling. It's humbling. But, but even in almost seven months, it's so funny. We were just looking at our wedding pictures. We got like our album back. And we were like, mind you, this is not even seven months ago. It's just under seven months. And we were like, wow, we look so different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because marriage has already changed us so yeah. much. Yeah. It's already shifted the way that we see ourselves, the way that we feel about one another, the way that we feel about ourselves. And so it's definitely been, thus far, the biggest challenge, but also the biggest Thanks blessing so. of my life. Yeah. yeah. That's why I say it. It's such a humbling, stripping thing. And yes, the reward is great, but it, it's, it's hard work that you have to do every day. But that's why... To become one. Yeah. You know? So I... Because I don't have to do it alone. Yeah. That's the totally. thing. He, yeah. he wants to do the work too. So yeah. we're doing the work together. But I also rebuke the notion that like marriage is hard. Yeah. No, marriage is fun. Marriage is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But marriage is... Marriage takes effort. Yeah. But relationships take effort. So I think I think sometimes we 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 have relationships here and then we have marriage over here. You no, can't no, be lazy in it. No, it, but it's all a relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all relationships that take effort yeah. and that we have to manage and and make a priority. Sure. But it's not that like marriage is hard because I think that discourages people from marriage. And yeah, I don't but that's that. the whole point of marriage. I mean, I actually talked to a couple of few. It was probably a few years ago. And, and they, their, the, their belief was marriage isn't for happiness, it's for wholeness. Ooh. And it's, a, yeah, I, I, I do believe that it's, 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 it's stripping you. It's, it's, become, it's unbecoming to become. Ooh. And I imagine that happens again in parenthood. Over and over and over no, and over. No, in parenthood. And then. in parenthood. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it, parenthood, I am unbecoming all the things. And again, it, it's a, a humbling thing. But yeah. yet, oh, wow, thank you for this gift. Thank you for this understanding. Oh, I wasn't patient here. Oh, I wasn't doing this here. It's, it's a completely different perspective shift of what the world would say is bad or hard. Yeah. Or it's as opposed to this is what is needed. Mm. We, we need this friction. We need whatever yeah. is pulling us back and forth. We need that yeah. push and pull. You know, we always want to have this light and feel and love and light and all those things. That's great. But the reality of those push and pulls in a marriage, in motherhood, in your entertainment industry, in acting, is to get out what we need to get out for us, to prepare us for what we are asking for. That's it. You know? Yeah. So lastly, where do you believe you are mentally? Mentally, I am open. Mm. There's a lot of transition, change. There's a, lot, there's a lot of balls in the air for me right now. And I think 
for the first time in my life, I am truly working at surrendering, mm -hmm. truly working at being like, I'm open, I'm surrendering. I don't know what's on the other How side of that. How do you surrender? Well, I've been trying to figure it out for 34 years, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, the way that I surrender is by believing that and truly believing that no matter what, I'll be okay. That's it. That's the only way you can surrender. It's the only way you can really just say, and let go. Because the truth is, everything in life is an unknown. We've tricked ourselves to believing that these to-do lists, these calendars, these, these uh, apps, whatever it is, are helping us run our lives. Nothing is running our lives, period. It is the only person that knows what's happening moment to moment, day by day, is God. That's it. If we think that we know, then we are fooling ourselves. And so surrender is, is, is understanding that. It's understanding, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that everything is always for my good. Come on. Like you said. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it go. Because the, the truth is, too, that's where anxiety and depression comes from. It comes from holding on so tightly to something that wants to go like this. Of course we're gonna be stressed. Trying to go like, trying to we're latch trying to control onto the, it. We're trying to control oh everything. Oh my gosh, and I am the master Same. of that. Yeah. I write a to-do list every day, and I think yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm so proud of myself. I, I've spent probably thousands of dollars on planners and to-do lists and calendars. But it's just now in my life, honestly, even someone in this moment talking to you, then I'm like, come on. Sis, just surrender and enjoy the ride because truly I believe, and I really do believe this in my heart with no hesitation, that the best is yet to come. I've had a blessed, beautiful, healthy, amazing life, but God is literally just getting started. He's up there rubbing his hands like, oh, are on. you ready? And in this waiting and in this transition season that you're in, this is a test for you. Oh, yeah. It's a test. It's a test. It's a test. And, and just, you know, and, and continue just to grab the tools and you're doing it like you need to to just get to where you want to go. Yep. But, whoo, you just spit a whole word. <laughs> That, that was really, 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 really rich and really good. And I, I, I had to let it come to me. It took me a second. No, but, but that was. I think wow. that's where I'm at, sis. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Here at Butter. Yes. We like to, of course, we love all of the external products, the vitamin C, the spray to take care of our skin. How do you take care of your internal being? Ooh. How do I take care of my internal being? Being intentional about surrounding myself with people who make me feel good and who see me and who love me. Um, prayer. Sunshine. My dad always told me, when, when, if, ever, when if ever you're feeling down, just go outside and rub some sunshine on your face. And he would tell me that when I was a little girl, but now that I'm older, it's... The sun is a healer, and it really is true. So sunshine does that for me. And then therapy. Therapy is so important. It's so important, and I really want black and brown people to continue to make it a priority in their lives. Mm -hmm. We have so much ancestral trauma we have now pandemic trauma. Um, and then just everyone has trauma from throughout their lives, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so therapy has, has truly changed my life and allowed me to um, take care of myself from the inside out. Yeah, so good. Yeah. What's next? More rest. Um, but also... The word that came to mind is greatness, which I'm like, <laughs> Receive it, claim it. But yeah, like, 
greatness is, is next for me. And, and I love that greatness is what came to me because old Ashley would have said a laundry list of what I think is next. This show, that movie, this whatever. But I love that greatness came to me because that means that I've surrendered, that I'm open to whatever it is. I just know it's going to be great. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I know that it's for me and that it's going to be great. Wow. Yeah. So good. Thank you so much. Thank you, sis. Thank you. For, You're a, a gift. Oh, and so are you. Like, thank you are you. truly a gift. And thank you for trusting me. And thank you for giving all the, just the wisdom and the insight that you have shared. It is not only, I know it's going to bless others, but it has blessed me. So thank you. Love you, girl. out that healing but it's an act of faith of giving it to God and saying okay like I see all of this but like please like help me like mm. you know like take away this pain and fill me with yourself and so I just chose to really consistently and relentlessly go after that I, I was determined like that was that was what was gonna happen